So a quick shout out to Unity for sponsoring this video, more about them in a moment. Because today we got something crazy, once again my patrons voted and today we are going to see how to create a toxic waterfall. Some radioactive waste from the wastelands of... Uh, okay. And I think it's really nice. Not gonna lie, this is some advanced stuff and I'm gonna try my best to guide you through. I hope you enjoy it. By the way, if you wanna get your hands on this project and many many other assets that you can use in your games, you can do it in my Patreon page, there's a link in the description. And Unity today is sponsoring this video. They actually have some pretty neat sales in the asset store and at this time of the year, the Black Friday event is going on. And there's definitely some very interesting assets with a huge discount that will definitely propel your game development abilities. So make sure to check that out, I left some links below in the comments and in the description. And with that being said, let's see how we can create the toxic waterfall. So for this project I used Unity 2021.2 with the Universal Render Pipeline and in Package Manager I have also installed Shadowgraph and Visual Effect Graph. And in Preference, in Visual Effects I have Experimental Operator slash Blocks turned on. So this is what we are going to do and for this to work out we are going to need a mesh. So let's jump to Blender so I can show you how you can create these objects. I'm gonna try my best to guide you through but it's best if you have some experience with Blender. And I'm using Blender 2.93. Let me just remove everything from the scene and paste the pipe. It's quite useful to have the object where you are going to apply the effect in Blender so you can properly shape the waterfall. So the idea is to start with Shift A so we can create a cylinder. Down here you can control the amount of vertices, by the way. First thing I'm going to do is press spacebar and search for Shade Smooth. You can do it up here as well in the Object drop down menu. With this nice and smooth cylinder I'm going to take care of the UVs. I'm going to drag a new window down here. Up here I'm going to select UV Editor and the idea is that we enter in Edit Mode with Tab and we want to erase these two faces. I'm going to press Ctrl Tab to select faces and select the top and the bottom face while holding Shift and press Delete to remove these faces. We simply want this rectangle. As a matter of fact, we want to correct the UVs. We want to push this down, but let's first turn on Constraints to Image Bounds. With B, we can select this, press G and lock it in Y to push it all the way down. And now we can start modeling the waterfall. I'm going to put it in place which basically means I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, move it with G until it's more or less around here, as you can see. And with S I'm going to squeeze this down in the Z and once again adjust the position. I'm going to stretch this a little bit more. What we want to do, first let's turn on Live Unwrap and click on this icon so we can see the vertices we are selecting in the UV editor as well and the idea is to select these front vertices and with G push them in the X to more or less around here and now with Ctrl R we are going to divide this around five times. And I'm sure there's other ways to do this, probably with the busy curve, but the way I come up with is now push them all the way down in the Z until it touches the ground and rotate it 90 degrees in the Y, scale this up and pretty much do the same for the other edge loops. Scale this one a little bit up and it's a matter of adjusting this, I'm gonna push this all the way back because I'm focusing on the curve that this waterfall is doing. More or less like this. Now we can scale these other edge loops a little bit more and down here with Ctrl R we can add more edge loops because we want to scale this up with proportional editing. O for shortcut or you can go up here and turn it on. If you scroll up and down you can control the influence of the proportional editing and it's very useful to influence the other edge loops as you can see. After adjusting the size down here I'm going to add another edge loop with Ctrl R up here, so the curve is a little bit more smooth. But that's basically it, as you can see we already have a nice waterfall mesh. There's another trick we can do is select these edge loops, all of them, and scale this up 
only in the Y, a little bit edge loop by edge loop. So it gets thicker towards the end. Alright, but once you got this nice shape, we want to go ahead and in the modifiers add a subdivision modifier. One for the level's viewport is enough. If you press Z and disable optimal display, you can see the subdivision in action. It has become much more smooth. Looking good, now the idea is to rename this to Toxic Waterfall and we can already create another mesh for the puddle, Toxic Puddle. I'm going to enter in edit mode of the waterfall first and while holding Shift and Alt, I'm going to select this bottom edge loop, press Shift S to say cursor to select it and I'm going to go to object mode by pressing Tab and with Shift A I'm going to add a cylinder and now the process is pretty much the same. We want to smooth this with Shade Smooth we want to enter the edit mode and remove these two faces. Fix the UVs, basically push this down, yeah. And now the idea is to select the top vertex, press S and then 0. And then you want to press G, lock it in the Z and push it two values down. So it becomes a flat circle, as you can see. Select everything and with G push it one value up, so it aligns perfectly with the waterfall base. And now you can scale this up quite a bit and with Ctrl R you can add three edge loops and then add another one right here and then another one just right here because it's going to create a nice effect with the shader we are going to create. The UVs are super important when working with shaders and with this type of effects. Right, so let's rename this to Toxic Puddle and now you can save this with Ctrl S directly to your Unity project, since it's Blender, Unity will import it as an FBX. Cool. Right, so let's move on to Unity. Now, I'm going to drag and drop the mesh we created, remove the other pipe. I'm simply going to rename it and create a prefab out of this. But what really matters is that we create the shader with right click. We are going to start with a blank shader graph. Rename it to Toxic Waterfall and double click to open it up. Dock the window, whatever you want. For the target, it's going to be universal. We want this to be lit, so it's influenced by lights. But we want the surface type to be transparent. Alpha is OK, and we are going to adjust this along the way. So we are going to need a texture for this, and to make things simple, we are going to use a Voronoi node, which is a procedurally generated noise. If we connect this to a power node, we are able to control the Voronoi amount, the Voronoi dissolve, basically. Let's just add some color to this. Actually, we are going to need two color properties, one for the Voronoi color and the other one for the base color. Both are going to be in HDR and we can select white and set the alpha to 100 as default. The Voronoi, we can connect it to this multiply node and this is going to be connected to the emission, which means the base color is going to be connected to the base color of the fragment function. Before we go see how this is looking, let's create a few more properties. One to control the Voronoi power, a float, default value of 2. And the other to control the scale, the Voronoi scale, default value of 5. And as you can see we have this angle offset which is quite useful. If we animate this, we kind of create entropy in our Voronoi. It's very simple to animate, we need a time node multiplied with something. In this case that something is going to be a float for the Voronoi agitation or the Voronoi angle offset. Actually, default value of 1. And another thing that is going to be useful is to scroll this Voronoi as well as control the tiling. So let's use a tiling and offset node. We are going to need two vectors, vector 2 is enough, one for the Voronoi speed and the other one for the Voronoi tiling, which must be with a default value of 1 by 1, but the speed we also need to multiply it with the time node, and connect it to the offset. And here we go, it's scrolling. So we already have a few things, let's test this out, let's press the save asset button, and with right click in the shader, let's create a material. Which we can drag and drop to our toxic waterfall. Oh yes, super bright. 
it's scrolling in the opposite direction, minus 0 0.5 in the Voronoi speed, and we can choose a green color for the Voronoi, a little bit of intensity as well, and we cannot see much, but I'm going to set the Voronoi tiling to 1.2 for the X and 0 0.6 for the Y. Let's increase the Voronoi scale as well to 10, and yeah, it started to look like something, I know it's super bright, but we'll fix it in a moment. Mostly because of this directional light, since it is a lit shader, it's influenced by lights. In this Unity version, we are able now to create categories inside the shader. So I'm going to create one for the PBR settings. In here, I'm going to drag the base color and then create another category for the emission Voronoi and drag the remaining properties. For the PBR settings, we can create a float to control the smoothness and another one to control the metallic and another float for the normal strength. The smoothness property, we can multiply it with the Voronoi, but let's first connect it to a power node so it doesn't become too intense. We just want a few of these bright spots. Connect it to the smoothness down here. Set the default value to 0 0.5, for example, and let's also say the metallic is 0 0.1 and connect it to its respective input. Oh yeah, by the way, you can create groups and it's quite useful since this is going to be a little bit big. Yeah, so for the normals, we are going to use a gradient noise, which is another precisely generated noise. This gradient noise must be clamped between 0 and 1, otherwise we get some artifacts. And we can actually connect this to a power node, 2 is enough and then connect it to a normal from 8th. That's very important because that's how it's going to interact with the light in some ways. Let's connect the normal strength with a default value of 0 0.01. Oh, and by the way, we can make this scroll, we must make it scroll, otherwise this will be a little bit static. And as usual, we use the tiling and offset node and then we can multiply a vector 2 with the time and connect it to offset, just like this. I'm going to drag this to this group and convert this vector 2 to the normal speed property. Finally, we can connect this to the normals input of the fragment function. And if we save this and go to the inspector now, we can say the metallic is 0 0.4, for example and the smoothness around 1.4, so it becomes really glossy. And the normal strength around 0 0.12, they are scrolling in the opposite direction, so minus 0 0.75 actually. And finally, let's get rid of these brightness and white values. Let's set the base color to a darkish green, something along these values. Most importantly, a color that you enjoy and that you think it looks good. Alright, so lastly I'm going to increase the Voronoi power to around 4 5. Yeah, that looks much better. And increase a little bit the speed to minus 0 0.6. Now what happens if we assign this shader to the toxic puddle? Well, let's find out. Let's duplicate the toxic waterfall material. Drag and drop it. And yeah, by the way, if you guys know how to get rid of this seam right here, this hard edge, make sure to leave a comment. So in this case, we want this to scroll in the opposite direction. 0 0.2 for the normal speed and 0 0.1 for the Voronoi speed, for example, are good values. It's a little bit slow, maybe, but it's up to you to adjust them as you wish. Now, what we are missing here is transparency. So down here, we can use a UV, and if we split this, if we use the G channel, we get a nice mask. In this case, the dark values means it's transparent, so that's exactly what we want. We can connect this to a power. It's useful to control this power value, so let's add a float up here and call it a transparency mask, because this is basically a mask that we are creating, and connect it to the alpha up here, and save, and press save asset. If you go to the inspector with the puddle selected and increase the transparency mask, here we go, we get a nice fade out towards the end of this geometry that looks very awesome. It's much more polished. 
But it's also useful to control the world transparency of the object, so what we can do is very simple. Up here, let's first add a float for the transparency, and this we can multiply it with the power node. Oh, and by the way, this transparency must be inverted, otherwise 1 means it's visible. We can do it with a 1 minus node. Replace connection to the alpha save and in the and in the toxic waterfall. As you can see, transparency now it kind of adds a nice touch. If it's just a small value like 0.1, yeah. And as you may notice, if you move around the camera, you may get this glitch, which is a little bit disturbing, and it's very simple to solve. If you go to the shader in graph settings. We have this depth right, instead of auto, we can say it's forced. And while we are here, let's also the render face is both. It's basically the two-sided. It will render the front and the back face. And now if we save this, if you move around, that glitch is gone. And if you look closely, you can see the other side of the mesh, which adds a really nice touch. And this next part is a little bit complicated. So I highly recommend you to check out this tutorial that I made a while back about vertex animation, where we animate a fish thanks to vertex displacement. That's what I used here. This is from the tutorial. I even created a new category for the wobble effect, and this is connected to the position, and it really adds a nice motion. These are my values, by the way, in case you want to inspire yourself. Another thing that I use it is very simple, and it's a point light. Make sure you create one and you place it inside the pipe with a good intensity and the color of your preference. Oh, and make sure to turn on soft shadows. Look at this, it's really awesome, very well. And for the next part, I added a particle on the ground, very simple, a green particle, but this problem may happen to you. If it happens, go back to the shader, turn on allow material override. Select the puddle and in the material of the puddle in the advanced options, set the queue control to user override and set the render queue to 3001. And that's it boys, look at this, it's awesome. Right, so for the next part I used another tutorial that I made recently which is the blood effect and it's awesome for this, I have even used it for some radioactive waste and it fits perfectly, so make sure to check out that tutorial. It will help you a lot to improve this effect. I have added some particles down here, some of them are in the pipe as well. I added even more particles where the waterfall hits the ground. And then I added some mists, which by the way, you can use this tutorial, the wipe and effects. We use smoke there and you can use it here as well with a green color. And then I added two more lights on the ground, and that's it, just look at this, this is awesome. I also increased the puddle ties, and I think it's a great effect. I hope you have enjoyed it. You can get this project in my Patreon page. By supporting me, you keep the channel alive. And I want to take this moment to thank each patron for supporting me, it really means a lot. And here's a quick shout out to the top tier patrons, which are Alak Frost, Bradford Errant, Kruby Doobie Doo, Daniel Athcock, David Daka, David Krug, David Mide Lars, Derek Benson, Donald Thompson, Edward Chai, Eric Hudson, FT92, Goblin Plague, Jules Klein, Karsten Mikulkak, Little Tsai, Maxim Mograf Tech, Nat Sims Oitsk, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, Roger Power, Stefan Zarkov, Unknown Enigma, Verisuta, Son Anchin, and Ingo Das. Your support has been truly amazing and it's so much appreciated, it keeps me going, so I can keep on making free tutorials. So I hope you have enjoyed, if you did please like, subscribe, you know the usual, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks, bye.